How ha! Perfect man, be at rest. With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Tau ha! O perfect man, be at rest. We have not revealed this Quran to you that you should fail in your mission. But it is a reminder of things inherent in human nature to him who stands in awe to God, and a revelation from him who created the earth and the high heavens. He is the most gracious God who is firmly and flawlessly established on his throne of power. All that is in the heavens and all that is on the earth and all that lies between them and all that lies deep under the moist subsoil belongs to him. If you speak aloud, he does not stand in need of it. He knows the secret thought as well as that which is yet deeper hidden. He is Allah. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but He. All of the most beautiful attributes belong to Him. You must have surely received the narrative about Moses. When he saw a fire, he said to his companions, Stay here, for I perceive a fire creating feelings of love and affection. I hope I may bring you a firebrand from there. Rather, I feel that I would find some guidance at the fire. And when he came close to this fire, he was hailed. O oh, Moses, verily I alone am your Lord, so take off your shoes and stay and make your heart free from every care, for you are in the sacred valley of Tuwa. And I have chosen you, therefore listen to what is revealed to you. I and I alone am Allah. There cannot be, is no other and will never be one worthy of worship but I. Therefore worship me alone, and observe prayer, so that you may keep me in mind. Surely the hour of resurrection is bound to come. I am about to unveil it, so that every soul may be rewarded in accordance with its endeavor. So do not allow the person who does not believe in it but pursues his own low desires, turn you away from believing it, lest you perish. Moses, what is that you have in your right hand? Moses replied, This is my staff. I lean on it, and bear down leaves for my sheep with it, and it serves also my many other needs. The Lord said, Moses, cast it down. So he cast it down, and lo, it, it, it was like a serpent running about. The Lord said, Get hold of it, and do not fear. We shall restore it to its former state. And put your hand close under your armpit. It shall come forth shining white, without any disease providing you with another sign. We have given you these signs so that we may show you some of our greater signs. Go to Pharaoh. He has indeed exceeded all limits. Moses said, My Lord, if you have chosen me for this mission, enlighten my mind and make my task easy for me and remove the impediments from my tongue, so that they may understand my speech, and grant me a helper from my family, Aaron, my brother. Raise my strength through him, and associate him in my task, that we may glorify you over and over, and spread your name far and wide. Surely you are indeed ever watchful over us. The Lord said, Moses, 
you are granted what you have prayed for. And we did confer on you a favor once before. When we revealed to your mother that which was an important revelation, saying, Place him, Moses, in the chest and put it into the river. The river will cast it onto the bank, and the person who is my enemy as well as his will pick him up. And I endowed you with my love, with the result that you were brought up before my eyes and under my protection. We bestowed another favor on you when your sister walked along the bank by the floating chest and said to those who picked up the chest from the bank of the river, Shall I guide you to one, a nurse, who will take charge of him? In this way, we restored you to your mother that she might be consoled and should not grieve. And it came to pass that you killed a person, but we delivered you from anguish. Then we purified you with various trials, and you stayed for a number of years among the people of Midian. It was only then, when you were properly groomed and came up to the standard set by us. And I, having made you perfect, have chosen you for myself. Go you and your brother Aaron with my messages, and do not be remiss in remembering me. Go to Pharaoh, both of you, for he has transgressed all limits. But speak to him with a gentle speech. Maybe he pays heed and fears the consequences. Both Moses and Aaron said, Our Lord, we fear lest he, Pharaoh, should hasten to do us some harm or exceed all limits in transgression against you. The Lord said, Have no fear. I am with you both. I hear prayers, and I see your condition. So go to him, both of you, and say, We are the messengers of your Lord, so let the children of Israel go with us and do not torture them. We have come to you with a message from your Lord. Peace will be upon him who follows the guidance. It has been revealed to us that the punishment comes upon him who cries lies to his messages and turns away. When they had delivered the message of God, Pharaoh said, Moses, who then is the Lord of you two, in whose kingdom you want to settle down? Moses said, Our Lord is he who gives every creation its proper form and character, and then guides them along the path of evolution in order to attain perfection and to do proper functions. Pharaoh said, What will be the fate of the former generations who did not believe in these things? Moses said, The knowledge of that is with my Lord, recorded in a book. My Lord neither errs nor forgets. It is he who made the earth a bed for you and has threaded it with pathways for you. He sends down rain from the clouds. We bring forth by means of this water pairs of vegetation of diverse kinds, so that you may eat it and pasture your cattle upon it. Verily in all this there are signs for the people possessing sound reason. We have created you from this universe, and into this we will make you return, and from this we will raise you to life a second time. And we showed him, Pharaoh, all sorts of our signs. But even then, he went on denying them and refused to believe. He said, Moses, have you come to us to turn us out of our country on the basis of your sorcery? But we too shall certainly meet you with a matching sorcery. Make an appointment of time and place between us, which appointment neither we nor you shall fail to keep. Let the meeting be at a place fair for us both. Moses said, 
The day of the festival will be the day of your appointment. And let the people be assembled when the sun is risen high. Pharaoh then withdrew and concerted his plan, then came at the appointed time and place for the contest. Moses said to them, Woe to you! Forge no lies in the name of Allah, or he shall destroy you utterly by some calamity. And surely he who forges a lie in the name of Allah has ever been unsuccessful. Upon this, they, Pharaoh and his courtiers, began arguing their affair among themselves and kept their discourse secret. They said, Surely these two brothers, Moses and Aaron, are sorcerers who seek to drive you out of your country by dint of their sorcery and to do away with your ideal religious traditions. Therefore, you had better consolidate your resources than come forward and arrayed in a body, and indeed he alone who gains the upper hand and wins shall be successful today. The sorcerers said, Moses, either you present first what you have, or we shall be the first to present what we have. Moses said, Nay, you present first what you have. Accordingly, they were the first to present. No sooner did they present them, lo, their cords and their staves appeared to him by their trickstery, only as though they ran about. So Moses felt afraid in his mind, lest the people be misled by their glittering tricks. We said to him, Have no fear. Surely it is you who shall be the uppermost. Now cast down on the ground that staff which you have in your right hand. It will destroy all their artifices. For all they have wrought is nothing more than a device of a sorcerer, and the beguiler shall never succeed whichever way he may choose to beguile. Then it so happened that the sorcerers were instantly made to fall down prostrate. They said, We believe in the Lord of Aaron and Moses. Pharaoh said, Dared you believe in him, Moses? Before I give you permission? He, Moses, must be your chief who has taught you sorcery. I will certainly cut off your hands and feet on alternate sides by way of punishment because of your disobedience. I will surely crucify you to death on the trunks of palm trees, and you shall of a certainty come to know which of us can inflict a more severe and more abiding punishment. They, the sorcerers, said, We will certainly never prefer you to the clear proofs and signs that have come to us, nor to him who originated us. You may decide what you like to decide. You can only decree concerning this present life and put an end to it. We have surely believed in our Lord, that he may protect us against our faults and particularly forgive us the sorcery which you did constrain us to practice. Allah is the best and ever abiding. Verily, he who comes to his Lord in a state of sin, he will surely be consigned to Jahannam, where he shall neither die nor live. But those who come to him as believers, having done deeds of righteousness, there await them indeed exalted ranks. Gardens of eternity, served with running streams, there they will abide. Such is the reward of those who keep themselves ever pure. And we directed Moses by revelation, Take away my servants by night, and take them along a dry path through the wide plain. You will not be afraid of being overtaken, nor will you have any cause of fear of being drowned. Now Pharaoh pursued them with his armies, but there covered them that tide of the sea which engulfed them completely. 
Indeed, Pharaoh caused his people to perish and did not lead them in the right way. O children of Israel, we delivered you from your enemy and made a covenant with you on the right and blessed side of the Mount Sinai, and we got manna and quail to be sent down to you. And it was also said, Eat of the good and pure things we have provided you, and do not exceed the limits in this respect, or my displeasure shall descend upon you. Indeed, lost are those on whom my displeasure descends. But surely I am greatly protecting to him who turns to me in repentance, and believes, and does righteous deeds, and then sticks to guidance. When Moses went to the mount, God said, Moses, what has made you depart from your people in such haste? Moses said, They are close on my heels, and I have hastened to you, my Lord, that you might be pleased. The Lord said, We have distinguished your people, the good from the bad, in your absence, and the Samiri has led them astray. So Moses returned to his people, indignant and sorrowful. Reaching there, he said, My people, did your Lord not make you a gracious promise? Did then the promised time of forty nights and days seem too long to you? Rather you desired that displeasure from your Lord should descend upon you, and that is why you failed in your promise with me? They said, We have not willfully failed to keep our promise with you, but the thing is that we were laden with loads of the jewelry of the Egyptian people, and we threw them away into the fire. That was what the Samiri suggested. Then it came to pass that he, Samiri, produced an effigy of a calf for the people to worship, a mere body without a soul, which emitted a lowing sound. And then they, the Samiri and his followers, said, this is your God as well as that of Moses. So he, Samiri, gave up the religion of Moses. Could they not see that this calf made them no answer and could neither avoid harm to them nor do good to any? Aaron had indeed said to them before the return of Moses from the mount, My people, you have only been tried by this calf. Surely the most gracious God is your Lord, so follow me and carry out my biddings. They said, We will never give up to cleave to the worship of this calf until Moses returns to us. Moses turning to Aaron said, Aaron, when you saw them going astray, what prevented you from following me and punishing them? Dared you then disobey my biddings? Aaron said, O oh, son of my mother, do not hold me by my beard, nor pull me by my head. If I was not strict to them, it was because I was afraid, lest you should say, You have caused a disruption among the children of Israel, and did not preserve my word. Moses now called upon Samiri to account for it, and said, What were you after by acting as you did, O Samiri? He said, I perceived that which... They did not perceive, my perception and insight being stronger than theirs. I had adopted only some of the traditions and the teachings of the messenger, but that too I cast away. That is what my mind made fair seeming to me. Moses said, Be gone then, if it is so. It shall be your punishment to proclaim yourself an untouchable throughout your life. Not only that, but there awaits yet another threat of punishment of the hereafter for you, from which you will have no escape. Now look at the God to which you remain so ardently devoted as a worshiper. We will destroy it utterly, and then we will scatter it away into the sea. Moses then addressing his people said, Your God is only Allah. There is no other cannot be and will never be one worthy of worship but he. He comprehends all things in his knowledge. 
In this way do we relate to you some of the important news of the days gone by, and we have indeed granted you from us a sublime reminder. Those who turn away from this shall bear a heavy burden on the day of resurrection, abiding thereunder, and grievous will the encumbrance be to them on the day of resurrection, the day when the trumpet shall be blown, and on that day we shall gather the sinners together, blue-eyed, the spiritually blind ones. They will talk one to another in a hushed voice, consulting together and planning in secret and saying, You have lived only for ten centuries. We know best what they will say, when the one of the most upright conduct among them will say, You have lived here only for a day. They ask you about the mountains. Say, my Lord will blow them up completely and scatter them as dust, and he will render them a desolate and a level plain, where you will find no curve, no depression, and no elevation. On that day, they will follow the call of him, the holy prophet, in the teachings of whom is no crookedness. All voices shall be hushed up before the most gracious God, so you will hear nothing but a faint murmur. On that day no intercession shall help anybody except that of him whom the most gracious God grants permission, and with whose sayings and doings he is pleased. God knows all that is before them and all that is behind them. They cannot encompass him with their knowledge and all persons shall humble themselves before the living, the self-subsisting, and all-sustaining God. And he who bears the burden of iniquity shall indeed fail in his objective. But he who does deeds of righteousness and is a believer will have no fear that he will be deprived of his reward or suffer any withholding of his dues. Just as we have revealed these verses, we have revealed the entire Qur'an in Arabic. We have explained in it in various ways our warnings against refusal and evil doings, so that the people may guard against evil and become righteous. Or rather, this Qur'an will bring forth for them a great glory and eminence. Highly exalted is therefore Allah, the true king, and make no haste to recite the Qur'an and anticipate the early fulfillment of its prophecies before its revelation is completed to you. But say in prayer, My Lord, increase me in knowledge. We had given a stern command to Adam before this, but he forgot, and we found no resolve on his part to disobey us. And recall the time when we said to the angels, Make obeisance to Adam and his sons. They all made obeisance, but Iblis did not. He refused to submit. At this we said, Adam, surely this fellow is an enemy to you and to your wife. Take care that he does not turn you both out of the garden of earthly bliss, lest you fall into trouble. It is provided for you that here you shall not feel hunger, nor shall you go naked, and that here you shall feel no thirst, nor will you be exposed to the sun. But Satan made an evil suggestion to him. He said, Adam, shall I direct you to the tree which leads to eternal life and a kingdom which never decays? So they, Adam and his wife, ate from that tree, so that their shortcomings became unveiled to them, and they began to cover themselves with the leaves of the garden. Adam did not observe the commandment of his Lord, so he became miserable. Then it came to pass that his Lord chose him for his benedictions, and turned to him with mercy and guided him to the right path. The Lord said, Go hence, both parties, one and all, 
you being enemies one to another. There shall most certainly come to you guidance from me. Bear in mind the law that he who follows my guidance shall not be lost, nor shall he be unhappy. But he who turns away from my remembrance, he shall surely lead a straitened life. And what is more, we shall raise him up blind on the day of resurrection. He will say, My Lord, what for have you raised me up in a state of blindness, while I possessed good sight before? He, the Lord, will say, That is how you acted. Our signs came to you, but you disregarded them. This day you will be disregarded in the like manner. That is how we recompense him who transgresses and does not believe in the messages of his Lord. Indeed, the punishment of the hereafter is extremely terrible and even more enduring. Does it afford them no guidance that we destroyed before them many a generation, in whose dwellings they now go about? Indeed, in this there are signs for those who possess understanding. But for a word of promise already made by your Lord, and the term already fixed for them, the inevitable would surely have befallen them by now. Hence, put up patiently with them what they say, and glorify your Lord with his praise before the rising of the sun and before its setting, and glorify him during the hours of the night and at the ends of the day in prayers that you may attain real happiness and true bliss. Do not strain your eyes towards and hanker after the glamours of this world, which some groups of these disbelievers have been provided by us, that we may distinguish the good from the bad through that. The provisions of your Lord and His gifts are far better and more lasting than all this. And bid your people to pray, and be constant and steadfast therein. We do not ask you to provide sustenance for us. It is we who provide sustenance for you. The good future lies in guarding against evil. And these opponents say, Why does he bring us no sign from his Lord? Has there not come to them a clear evidence about the advent of this prophet from what it is contained in the former scriptures? Had we punished and destroyed them with a calamity before the advent of this prophet, they would have certainly said, Our Lord, why did you not send a messenger to us, so that we might have followed your commandments before we were humiliated and disgraced? Say, each one of us awaits the end. Therefore, wait you also. You will soon come to know who are the people of the right path and who followed right guidance, and who do not.